I was debating whether or not I should review this. Because of, well, what more I could add that's or even said online. I, I mean, <laughs> it's, but in the end, I still felt I had to, to give this a go and, and try you know, just to say my thoughts, and, you know, because that's what I do, you know, but let's start off by saying this, Borderlands movie is absolute crap, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> yep, yep, you're here, right, I'm just, Hazard from Hazard is saying everything, is basically saying exactly what everyone else has said, I have no problem in it, but I have to, I have to agree with him. The Borderlands movie is absolute garbage. Oh boy. I knew going into the, this. I mean, okay. I heard from everyone that, I've, that I know that this movie was not a good movie. Everyone had been saying it. Oh, it's, it's really bad. It, it's bad. And, I was, like, you know, I, and I looked at all the scores, and I saw, well, at the time, just, I think, five days ago, was a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I was just like, uh, I, the thing was, and all the reviews were saying this is the the bottom of the barrel of video game adaptations. Nothing else could compare. I was like, seriously? <laughs> this, look, it's fair to say the video game adaptations have in, to films have improved over the years. I mean, especially I would say in t since twenty nineteen, things have gone better with adaptations. I mean. We, you can tell with the quality of some of these ones and the critical and financial successes that they've start, that things have started to change. Yeah, there've been a few hits and misses when it comes to a, uh, you know, you know, box office success or uh, or even you know critical ratings. But at the very least, you know, critics seem to enjoy them more, are starting to improve the, them more, uh, starting to like them more, and fans uh, of the games are are enjoying them as well. And, but with this one, I was, I was surprised just how many people were saying this is the worst. Okay, I could sort of see just because, I can sort of understand because of the improvements, as I said, with the improvement of quality of, of previous adaptations over the last couple of years, but I was like, really? This is the worst? I mean, this is worse than, say, Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Um the the oh jeez um you've got other games like you know you've got the the uber bowl films seriously this is worse than the uber bowl films uh warcraft assassin's creed well i even thought it, i even didn't like five nights at freddy's that much last year i thought that was bad i was like this is worse than all of that there is nothing to enjoy i gotta take a look at this and I was going to say, I was thinking, yeah, this is going to be bad, but it can't top anything that I just listed, especially Annihilation and the Uber Bowl films. I, ex I was expecting that, at least. And when I came out, I was a lot, I came out of the fears. I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. I definitely can see it. Yeah, this film sucks. It sucks hard. And it's not as... Whether or not I can call this as Uber Bowl quality, that I'm not sure. J just, just hear me out. Because I, 
I forget which one it is, but, you know, well, okay. Pretty much all of Uwe Boll's films, when it comes to his adaptations of video games, are horrendous. And people hate them, like, non-stop. I mean, let me think, what, what was it? I'm pretty sure it was, pretty sure it was Alone in the Dark, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Alone in the Dark, but it's considered, yeah, Alone in the Dark, it's considered one of the worst movies of all time. Whether or not this is going to be put on that list. Because here's the thing. This is one of the reviews I've seen of this is this is not even close to the, say, the so bad it's hilariously quality of the original Super Mario Bros. movie. And they say it's trying to emulate that. I, I forget who it was, but I saw that review and I was like, because the thing is, that's actually been put on Wikipedia's page of the worst movies of all time. Yeah, the original, the first ever, the live-action Super Mario Bros. movie with Bob Hoskins and John Leguizano. And, oh, Dan Hopper. But, you know, people have debated about that, whether it does belong on that list. It, especially because, as I said, of the evolved films, especially Alone in the Dark and, you know, Blood Rain and uh, Postal and all that. Um... Um, what else? Uh, House, of the, House of the Dead, another one, here. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, I was skeptical. And I, I still, I even think Annihil Mortal Kombat Annihilation deserves to be on that, uh, considered to be worse, on the worst movies of all time, instead of the, super, the, the, not, the original, the live-action Mario movie. I don't know if this will get put on it. It probably will. But I'm just saying at the moment, I don't know if it deserves to be on it. However, what makes this film bad is just not how horrendously awful it is in the quality. It's the fact that nothing new is done here. And because it's a massive step back from the quality of pre the last couple of films, is why I think people hate this. And and there is a lot of reasons as to why the production of this has been in, of this film has been noted for how for how troubled it's been, whether it be. I mean, I don't want to go over all the details of this, of the making of this, but obviously, you know, with, um, with, you know, I'm not going to, um, yeah, well, it's, it's well known about, you know, Craig Mazin was attached to do, to write the script for this after he's successful, and people were excited for that because he was successful the, of the Last of Us series, you know, you got the, the casting, which, I think, yeah, people are drawing criticism to it, but I don't know. Were people uh, iffy over it at the beginning? I mean, I was... When I saw the cast, uh, when it was announced, I thought it was okay. I mean, but, you know, whether or not people had trouble, had issues then, that's, that's debatable. Of course, the filming wrapped in 2021. The reshoots didn't take place till two years later, in last year. That's two years of this film not being worked on. Now you could now you could say it could have been interrupted by the by the pandemic. Well, if that was the case, why didn't they get back to work on it? Maybe around June, do the reshoots in June 2022, when things in the world were starting to get normal again. Because I think that's around that point, because they were still a little bit hesitant, still a little bit of concern about, you know, the paying back, you know, films going back into, you know, production around that time, uh, even in early 2022. But yeah, why did it wait till next year? And the fact that, you know, the, the director of this film, Eli Roth, was unable to do the reshoots, they had to go to Tim Miller, who, yeah, you know, who, the director of the first Deadpool, Terminator Dark, Dark Fate, and, um, I think he worked a bit on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I think, yeah, I, I'm sure he did, because he did a, 
because he own he is one of the owners of Blur Studios who do who animate the Sonic the Sonic movie and did a few of the games like Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic 6. Well, the CG cutscenes that is. Um. So and then Mason requests that he doesn't that he wants his name taken out of the credits and we have this new writer with a fake pseudonym. That's concerning. I mean, I said I wasn't going to spend too much time talking about the history, but I basically ran over the main main issues. But what it's hard to say where things could go wrong. Well, where things went wrong. It's not like Food Fight, where you can pretty much determine in your own way when things start to go downhill. With this, it's difficult. Whether or not this was already in a bad state at the end of the 2021 and when the reshoots and the the two-year gap between the re the original shooting and the reshoots that's the tough part it, well okay i think it is easy to figure out but i mean geez i've spent trying to def Trump saying all the facts and all that, and I haven't even gone over my thoughts. Okay. Well, I should mention, I have played the Borderlands games. Not much, but I have played them. And they are really entertaining games. I like the humor. I like the world. I love the guns. And, and a lot of these characters are very memorable. It's... And it is clear to say it takes a lot of inspiration from post-apocalyptic and sci-fi movies. Those those games. And there's a lot of, you know, quality in them. You got, obviously, and it's not just, you got the, the three main games, you got the pre-sequel, you got the Tales of the Borderlands series of games from, from Telltale Studios. There is a lot that success. I mean, I even prefer Love Claptrap's appearance in a in Poker Night 2. <laughs> also, maybe like, the you know, defunct Telltale games. Oh, I just wish a new rebranded studio would make it Poker Night free. Also, I want to bring back that concept. I'm getting off sidetracked, but I'm just saying. I like the world. I like the games. I know fair few things about these games and the world of Pandora. Now. But I will say this, outside of the bus taking Kate Blanchett to her starting point, where she eventually meets Claptrap, well, I mean, you know, yeah, Lilith, I should say, that's Kate Blanchett's character, and, you know, main character, main, the main character in the game, so I think. But anyway, that's all I can really recognize, because the rest of this film. Either it's because of the quality, or the acting, or the non-stop action scenes that just won't take a break. I was so distracted, and was just in a really bad mood. I think a lot of people say that. Um, I mean, the story is basically, you know, your basic fetch quest in the game, you know, that probably works, but that does work for the games, but that's because you have other side missions to do, you know, in the Borderlands, the Borderlands games, but in here, you just have this basic, you know, story where, you know, you know, head of evil company, you know, at, you know, Atlas, his daughter's taken. She's the key to open the the vault that he's after. She hire, he hires a bounty hunter, Lilith, you know, played by Kate Blanchett. Um, she and sends her to Pandora, which you know she has a history with. She arrives on there, meets Claptrap, then meets the other you know uh, characters that are, that are side with uh, with uh, Atlas's daughter, you know, Tina. Um. Go off and you know find find the find the vault. 
because there's nothing else because you have nothing else to do on this world the story is nothing you need more you need to make it more engaging you need more stuff to do it's not a video game you can't, it's not even a tv show it's a movie you need more things to do you need more substance and we get nothing and all we get in between is unfunny jokes non-stop action scenes as i said won't stance take a break in between things um and you know just this never any cycle where, oh we're in a cool like we're in a new location from the games we're out of here you know that that sort of thing it's there's no time to breathe you and they as i said these jokes are not funny including the references i can only remember laughing twice one was a legit giggle one was from claptrap which i think was i don't remember when i think it was just after they met tina uh he and you know lilith met tina and the other the other two i i've um the other two males company her uh, i'm just looking at uh, royland and uh creed i think it was and there was one brief instance where I, I would say I sort of, I would say it was a chuckle, but, you know, I did remember, you know, giggling slightly. I think it was a moment with, uh, with Lilith, I think. Uh, but I do remember, in, and I think it was a between Lilith and Claptrap. Um, that was it. So if I can only laugh twice in this, one being legit, that's an issue that's, that's basically shows how unfunny this film is and i've already mentioned how much the, the action scenes i just wish they could take a break especially i think in, in this hallway fight which you, there are a lot of references to the guardians of the galaxy uh, this film is basically inspired by it and suicide squad basically any james gunn production and it's boring you know and you, you can basically tell what this film's replicating you know and i know they, there were a lot of a lot of these films were inspir inspirations for the games like you know mad max being the main one i think and i was just do something original give it your own spin do something creative pandora is a fantastic is a is a, a is a great world to explore in the games it's fascinating we don't get any of that, and that's part of the reason why it bombs. You forget it. And these characters have no chemistry and no history behind them. Lilith might be the only exception, but her plot twist, the very end, which Claptrap de deciphers, is just head slapping head slapping head slapping i slapped my head real hard when that happened i and i groaned i was like you are seriously doing this it makes no sense because this plot twist means this whole entire entire story was absolutely pointless none of these characters had to be here it is so awful, especially when you don't like these characters to begin with. I mean, and these the characters are either boring or annoying. The boring rock ones, and a lot of it does come from the from the actors. Um, I mean, they these actors are good actors. I will say that they I've liked them in other things. But they do not work here because they have no chemistry between them. And they're, I mean, let me go. The villain, um, uh, Atlas, the villain, Edgar, Edgar, Edgar Ramirez. He is barely in this film and he's boring as. He's basically, you know, you basically see him in, you know, 
things like Divergent and Hunger Games. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Royland. Kevin Hart is a really funny person. I've laughed at him and other things. But he is he, he is just a plank of wood. He, he saves Tina at the beginning, and that's it. He's just along for the ride and doesn't say anything funny. I times I'm just I could I just he was just invisible, you know, at times. And there's a point where he stays behind, sacrifice himself. In the hallway fight that I mentioned before, that I thought just wouldn't stop at any point, and of course he survives. Oh gosh, he blow, he throws a bomb, and he's able to survive and gets overrun by a bunch of guys. Oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, um, next up, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, you can, uh. As the doctor, I should say. I, I forget the name, but um, she is. She provides these blank expressions that she's supposed to sound can look convincing, and unless it's been provided, I think by the director saying, "You go emote." Her voice doesn't convey any sort of emotion, and that really makes things distracting when you see these, you know, childlike expressions like. I'm trying to give you a visual just demonstration of what I thought it looked like, but that's basically what Jamie Lee Curtis provides. And her voice voice provides no emotion. But the big one is Tiny Tina. Oh. Who I think is one of the most annoying characters I've seen in a film in a long time. Now, I have nothing against Ariana Greenblatt, but she is a fine young actress. She's been in other great things before. She's been in a bunch of other, other things beforehand where she has done well. I mean, I thought she looked, she did well as the young Gamora in the flashback in Avengers Infinity War. She wasn't that, and you know, she did, she did well in um, other stuff like, um, you know, the boss baby family business. I thought she was okay. Um, and Scoob, uh, again, she was okay as a young Velma. Velma. Um, you know, and. Uh, I forget who she was in Barbie. You know, you know how I feel about that film. She has done well. But in this film, she is awful. Awful and annoying. I her acting is just so bad. And I every line I was just like she is getting she was just getting on my nerves. I just wanted her to shut up. Shut her her mouth. That is just she was just so, in her childlike innocence and her voice, it was just grating, grating ass. And when we get, and as I said, she is supposed to be the chosen one. And when we get to the big reveal, the plot twist behind Lilith, it just makes it even worse because that means she doesn't even belong to be, need to be here. So I spent all that time watching her for no purpose. You can tell just how infuriating that is. That tw plot twist is one of the worst I think I've ever had to experience in any film. And that's saying something. And the effects. This is they. It looks expensive, but they look cheap. You at one point they want to make this as graphic as possible. You know, because all the games are you know graphic games. You know, the MA here in Australia. They want to make an R-rated film, but I. But due to the reshoots, which I know is the main reason behind this, they obviously had to cut out the gore. There was so the stuff of exploding, seven feet exploding. Heads, you know, or seven limbs, I should say, and all that, you know, and you know, blood flying out, you know, like you see in Deadpool, which is surprise, which I guess is all surprising considering what Tim Miller's background, what Tim Miller has made before, uh, when it's not a video game and is a video game production. I mean, he's only a video game production in Sonic, but as I said, but going on with that, 
those you can obviously tell when those scenes were cut and the effects just help convey what should have been there but obviously got you know taken away and left out that, that's not accounting the uh the opening the hatch scene we can actually see one of the hands of the crew opening the the door i well i'm opening the vault uh entrance i was like oh gosh this is like i watched uh snow dogs uh uh very recently the, the cuba gooding jr film and that had its own fair share of bad effects like the platform holding up the sheet of ice the cuba gooding was sitting, standing on for this one scene i was like why did they have to cut that out? That's <laughs> why couldn't they cut that out? It's much like the um, it's almost like as bad as say the cup, the Starbucks cup, and the water bottle at the in the in episodes four and six of season eight of Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I... With that said. I can say two things. Uh, actually, three. I admire that it is capturing the look of the game. So it, you can tell at certain points that is that the sh they are trying to capture the look of Pandora, at least in you know in, in Borderlands One, because that's what this is mostly you know sort of based around. And it you know it does look you know decent at times. Um, even though again you can tell. At certain points, they're trying to, you know, copy elements from other films, but they do at least try to capture the world of of Pandora. Now, when it comes to now, I will say this: when it comes to some of the performances, uh, Kate Blanchett, at times she is in trying to be, she is invested in everything that's going on. Yeah, but then again, so uh, there are also times that she isn't. So it's strange, you know. I think. Again, I guess you can tell where the reshoot when the reshoots happen and everything. And, but at the very least, there is a, a, an attempt. There is at least half the performance where she is, you know, giving it her all, and and not 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 boring. I should say at least she is passable. And you know, I can admire it at the very. I can at least accept that she did try. As did um, the one actor who I haven't conf really talked about that much, I've already mentioned his character, uh, Jack Black as Claptrap. I don't know if people are... I haven't seen that... Of the reviews I haven't seen, I've seen a few that, that really go after, you know, Claptrap. Honestly, out of all the characters, he was the only one that didn't sound the same. And I appreciate for it. He's Jack Black, I know... It, it's. His voice was probably altered in some way, but at least it sounds similar to Claptrap in the games. Um, both, both versions, because obviously I know you got recast for Borderlands 3. You know, I'm not going to go over, over that. That's its own sort of topic. But I think he did at least try his hardest and was giving his all. I mean, we, as I said, obviously you know how much he... I mean, it's not as, you know, it's not as great as performance as him as Bowser from the Super Mario Bros. movie well, last year's that is um, but he definitely is trying and as I said of all the di of all the dialogue I did it was with Claptrap that I did get the two laughs I did have and at the very least I didn't mind him at all in this and I'll see if I found Claptrap I, I, I don't know I'm sort of uh, Claptrap's a, a character in the games that everyone is very divided over where people actually really like him or really despise him i'm one of the fans and i thought you know even when i first found out that jack black was going to play claptrap i was like yeah i think that's a good decent a good choice and i was i was i i liked what i got from him um with the exception of his main purpose behind everything which again is with the plot twist any time he spoke, I was, I was enjoying. I, I, I didn't feel. I, I wasn't, you know, bored. I, I at least, uh, I wasn't. I didn't. I at least saw something. Um. Yes, I'm just saying it. Yeah. At least he wasn't 
half assing it. That, that's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that's really it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not one of those so bad it's enjoyable movies. It's not like The Room. Um, it's just... I, I got, got no other words, otherwise, I, other than a couple, other than saying a swear word, I can't really have uh, anything else I can really say about this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, score. Uh, I know now it's 10 on Ron, 10 percent Ron Tomatoes. And I'm sticking by what they originally did. Uh, so if it's 9 percent from Ron Tomatoes, it's a 0 0.9 out of 10 as stars for me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Now I think you are probably also wondering this. Is this the worst movie I've seen in cinemas ever? I can't say for sure. I don't know why. Now look, I'm a fan of the games, but what this is its first attempt at a feature, at a feature film. And I don't have as much of a, a, as a connection with the games as I do, say, uh, other games like you know, Mario and, you know, Sonic, um, um, uh, Pokemon and, you know, uh, other stuff too. Like, I honestly think I have more connection with Ratchet and Clank, uh, slightly. Um, even Angry Birds, you know, like, yeah, and other stuff, you know, Resident Evil, no one, Street Fighter. As much as I like the games, they're not they're not my favorite series. I still like them, but I don't have that much of a massive tie to them. Compared to say, as I said, the game the series I've listed and other films that I really love, like well, The Lion King. Because as you know, I hate the remake. And I call it when I reviewed it all those years ago, the worst movie experience I've had in a theater, uh, watching theaters, but the worst movie I've ever seen theaters, because of how how much I felt it insulted the original film, and I still feel that way right now. I still think, at least at the moment, with me. That the Lion King remake is still the worst movie I have seen in theaters. I have seen other bad movies that have come close in theaters. You know, I mean, I could say, you know, Don't Worry Darling in 2022 was close to it. You know, being as bad as a movie I've seen in theaters, especially since I, I took my, it was a bad experience because I also took my grandfather with me that day and it all, watch it and i was like we'll both uh like yeah this film blowed even even barbie as much as i hate the movie i am not prepared to call it the worst thing i've seen for years because you know it's just it just wasn't made for me but you know and even as i said don't worry darling as much as i was upset that both me and my grandfather saw a bad movie. I, at least still bonded, and at least we, you know, both agreed it was decent. It was, it wasn't, a, it was a bad movie, but you know, we, it was still. At least we went out to see a film together. With this, as much as it is awful, I am willing to. the The fact that I don't have too much of a connection with it, with the series, as much as I say, The Lion King. The original, the original version, and even the seat, the straight for your sequels. I'm not prepared to give it that title. It's probably the worst, the worst of film, but the worst. But in terms of the experience of watching in a theater, I had a worse. I still say I had a worse time got watching the Lion King remake in theaters than I did watching the border, the border, Borderlands in theaters. That, and I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be, and I hope, at the very least, you understand where I'm coming from. It's, it's tough, but I do feel that way. And I'm sure there are probably a lot of other people who say the exact same thing. That, you know, as much as how awful this is, 
it's probably not the worst film they've seen in theaters. Probably not the worst film they've seen in general. I mean, there'll be a few who say, oh, it's the worst movie I've ever seen, but there'll be a few who feel differently. It just depends on the person. Um, you know, that, you know, despite how, you know, deep, you know, how awful something that they see, something awful that they see or watch or, you know, play, they always say, oh, I think I had a worse experience with something else. And that's kind of what makes us all, you know, individual people. We all have our individual likes, individual dislikes, what we agree with people, what we disagree with. It's what makes us all, you know, our own uh, individuals, our own individual. And I, I hope, and I'm looking, and I'm looking forward to hearing more people um, who actually do see this movie. I mean, this is all, I already know it's, this film's already a big bomb at the box office, but for those who actually do see it, whether they're in theaters at the moment, or wait till it's released on the streaming services or physical media or pay television, whatever, um, what they have, what their experience is like. I think this is going to be a real good talking point. <laughs> Worst movie so far this year? Probably is. <laughs> but a good discussion topic? Same here. Yeah. I, I think you're also probably wondering, uh, maybe after doing my recent review of Sugar and Spice, if I'm also feeling the way I do, but and probably need to watch something a bit more, you know, better quality. Well, in in, ter in terms of movies in theaters, I do hope to see M Night Shyamalan's Trap. I I hope, I hope that might be next week. Um. And but in terms of things I might do, any other reviews I might do for this channel, th there is one I might be doing actually very soon. I'm just gonna have to work a bit, a little bit on it, and you know, see what I can actually you know, uh, say because. I actually don't want to give away because I don't know if I can if I'll get this done in time or anything. But I'm just saying now, this is going to be a little bit special. This one, if I get to it because of recent news last week. But yeah, there's my rant. <laughs> actually, I feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well. Got nothing else to say. Um, has the press reviews out, and take care. See you for the for the next video. Ciao.